But now we have uh, Mr. Denny Miller, who's an amazing front of house engineer and system tech, and he does tons of other things. I, he's got countless jobs. Denny, how did you get involved with Space Map Go? I, I know you come from a more of a touring background, so how did you get involved? So this actually spawned for me back in the end of 2018. I was working with an artist that had some interest in trying to produce a spatial experience on tour in arenas. And I'd actually, we, we produced more or less the entire show using a different spatial mixing platform. And one of the things that kind of bummed this for us was the fact that the company that provided that spatial mixing platform really were adamant that we use their loudspeakers, which were non-powered, which there were some issues trying to get amplifiers into the right places and build the infrastructures in the arenas, which that in the end sort of, sort of put a, a lid on things temporarily. And some of my friends at Meyer sort of poked their head up and were like, hey, we're working on something new. You should come check this out. So they hooked me up with uh, with Steve Ellison and a couple other the guys that work at Meyer. Uh, we went out to Berkeley and we actually ended up using some of the content that I had edited for that tour at a demo at ISC in 2019. So that was some of my first introduction to Space Map Go, sort of as we know it now. So had you done much? I mean, you uh, being a touring guy, most of the time you work in either a stereo or mono world. Um, had you worked in spatial audio much at all before that, or was this, Mag this Out, outside artist? of studio projects in immersive experience, something that was not meant to be toured, you know, it's installed. No. So, but this, you know, the whole touring foray was sort of the new thing that this sort of opened up and said, Hey, this is possible now. So what has been some of the uses that you've, you've found for space map go? Well, so the initial thing, and you know, it's sort of been the buzz lately is the frontal system, of course. And you know, we've, we've all sort of seen this where you hang five, seven, maybe even nine arrays of some size across the proscenium of your stage, which is cool. And it, it does add definitely some sonic depth. You know, so much of what we do now, as far as, you know, we think the stereo or even a mono environment of the past that we've all become familiar with is we mix in that sort of environment, we're hacking up with EQ and we're adding compression and limiting and we're trying to do everything we can to make our mix fit in the little bit of sonic space that is afforded by stereo. When you start doing this frontal system, all of a sudden you end up, you find yourself doing less work, things maybe sound more natural, you definitely have more room to create your sonic experience. Um, yeah. So, you know, we, we've seen that frontal system become a buzz recently. But, you know, I think the thing that's most interesting for me and that when you try to explain this to your production managers and your artist managers and your creative people that are designing all these tours, you know, the thing they get excited about is like, well, if I can put some surrounds in the back and, you know, earlier you showed an example where I think there were eight or 10 surrounds and you can do that, but you could also get away with two or three if you can get them in the right places and you can, you can do things yeah to make this experience where, you know, you would make an audience member's head turn and go, what was that? I've never experienced that at a concert before, which is, you know, it's part of what allows you to justify the extra expense of more loudspeakers and additional processing and the time it takes to create the content that you might do this with. And yeah, that, that's sort of some of those practical application things that you were talking about. And one thing that we have talked about offline is the it sort of came to you that a space map is not a representation of the physical location of the loudspeakers. And I think I tried to make this map to look like the one that sort of shocked you, which was, this is a frontal arena. This is that same arena system, but here we have a frontal mixer and we can use this part of the space map to control the frontal system and we can get granularity as well as width, but then we can also build the space map to where we can use it as a quad surround mixer. So here I, I added some virtual nodes and connected multiple speakers together. If I just click on these nodes, I'm now activating corners of the room. And if you had the loudspeakers in an arena like this, I imagine this uh, example to be some sort of esports arena for video games or something like that. So you have this multiple flexibility. Um, I also, put a virtual node in the middle here, and now I can hit every single one of the loudspeakers in the surround. So here is a space map that is not only controlling a frontal system, but now can control the surrounds in a very different way. And I know personally from talking to you that you have 
some other really cool use cases for this. And uh, let's talk about them. So yeah, you actually just, you touched on the key thing. If you could show that again, I think the key thing to, to get into everyone's head, if you walk away with something from this, is that that rectangle does not represent your space at all, to put that in a more simple terms is you learn how to build your space maps and it is it proved you know i sat in with you uh, i think it was last week two weeks ago maybe at a demo here in nashville and every single person that you showed this to once they learned how to create a space map and heard some of the use cases that you had come up with some things that i'd been doing and other users uh every single person found a new way or a, a way that they wanted to try to use this that worked in their creative application whatever that might be you know, this is a really interesting map that you made right here. The randomizer, you want to talk about that a little bit? We had a project recently that involved a football stadium. And the problem was that there was a single mono source of audience noise. And so it's for a football stadium and no one's able to go watch the game. And they wanted to be able to replicate the audience sound for the stadium. Well, the College Football League, NCAA, has very strict rules about what audio can be used. And the source that they give you is actually an individual mono track of audio. And so what we did was we, we created a very simple space map here. We had 16 loudspeaker locations throughout the stadium and we pointed them in towards this, the football field. And we simply just had this awesome space map that we could then add movement to and stuff. But what we did later was make a space map called a randomizer. Space map is an abstraction of a loudspeaker layout. You can create very fun things like this, which as I move around, we can control random gain values. So it's the exact opposite of what you would normally do in a system. Well, one thing I'll yeah. point out is that you're, while you're doing that, it's preserving power. So you don't have exactly. to do the math yourself so that it's a constant power panner. So even though he's assigning to different channels here, as he's moving around, the sum of the power remains constant. So you can, yeah. which is important for that application where you have to maintain a certain like decibel level, right, in the venue. Yeah, yeah, the rule, they have rules on how loud the sound can be. And so what's cool is we're actually using a mono signal to create a whole entire reverberant space that sounds like a stadium in game day. The guy who uh, is the head of audio at the stadium said it sounded exactly like game day, as close as possible, of course, uh, without real audience. And so here we have a mono signal representing 100,000 bodies in a stadium and and the, the flexibility of space map and being able to manipulate our loudspeaker positions in an abstraction allows for this sort of creativity. Benny, what are some other uses for uh, space map that you've you've found? So there's definitely a few. So one of the most interesting ones to me, I think everybody is they sort of you present them with this this spatial mixing tool and they go, well this is for the audience side of things. That's not necessarily true. Um, so a couple of the bands that I work for, we've seen uh, situations, say, you've, say you get a rock band. So four guys on stage, uh, you know, one guy's behind the drum kit, but you've got three guys that are moving all over the stage. So you're in these large arenas and stadiums and there's a thrust. And at times there can be, you know, upwards of 20 loudspeakers on the stage, 20 monitor wedges. They could walk up to at any given moment. And in some of those situations that I've seen, you know, they, the band might even have two different monitor engineers to try to manage simply not mixing for the guys, but making sure that their mix appears in the right wedge as they walk up to it. And the way they've done this forever in a lot of these situations is, you know, they mix on an aux send and they send it to a matrix on their console. And if you could set the GoPro up at the end of the console and just watch them dance, moving the faders around, it's, it's quite the, the juggling act. Whereas, you know, I really see some, uh, you know, I've seen it used once already where, you know, space map has been demonstrated as a tool to do exactly that. You know, the dot on the, on the panner represents the person on the stage. And as you move them across the stage, it puts their mix in the correct monitor wedge. The other thing you could add to that is, is that we do support RTTPM protocol. So you could use black tracks and you could put a tracker on the lead singer. And as they walk around, you could see, you can scale the black tracks area to a, to a range of area of the space map. So that could be done automatically. Yeah, which is a great segue to another use case that I've seen. And I tested this one myself a little bit. So I work for an R&B artist, depending on the day. Uh, 
and one of the things that we've used this for, we already have a black track system on that tour running uh, in combination with a follow spot system so that the follow spots over the stage just follow the singer automatically. Take that information, give it to Space Map Go, and all of a sudden you can set up a space map where essentially you can imagine you've got a front fill send going to all the front fills on the lip of the stage. But as he would move across the lip of the stage, in effect, anywhere he was, his voice was two or three dB louder uh, in association with a little bit more reverb in some cases. So this creates an interesting little psychoacoustic field when he gets down on one knee in the front row and sings sweet nothings into the crowd. You really can kind of you localize on him and you feel like you're in this experience, which is cool for all the people in the front rows that, you know, paid big money for those tickets. Same thing, another interesting thing that I've done some testing with, and this worked remarkably well. Sometimes you find yourself working for a rock band that have, you know, tons of stage volume, real amplifiers all over the stage. So you find yourself maybe in a situation where you're a little off center, you've got a front fill right in front of you and directly in line with it, you know, 20, 30 feet back on the stage, or sometimes oftentimes a lot closer than that, a guitar amplifier. So you could matrix out outputs from your consoles and you could essentially make the guitar amp not exist in the mix that is going to that front fill. It's almost like a mix minus using space map, yeah. but you get this great graphic user interface to control that. Yeah. I bet Josh is about to tell me we're running out of time, but there's so oh, many no, man. great no. applications. I'll show an example of the monitor uh, thing real quick, and then uh, we it's it's time for you. So in real time, while Denny was talking, I built a monitor mixing platform. Let's imagine we have a stage with three frontal monitor locations. Each one has three monitors or wedges on it. And let's say our bass player, uh, or our, we have a static keyboard player here, and we have a drummer over here on our stage. Well, if I make a space map and I have musicians that want to just be moving across here. I can make a space map that can instantly place channels and instruments as I'm tapping across into that mix. So this allows for you to, you know, mix monitors. I'd send an output from my monitor console. And then anytime my lead singer walked over to this side, we just pop them in this mix. And then if I wanted my lead singer to pop over here, I would just put him here and vice versa. Or as he's moving across the stage, since we're using space map, I can also dynamically adjust the levels for each one. And this node, this position locator could be on a tracker. And that would allow us to do really cool mixing things. And I made the space map literally as Denny was talking. We could clean it up and make it pretty, but that shows you how easy it is to make a tool that's useful there's one one thing I forgot to mention that you asked of kind of the evolution of what you can do with Space Map Go that you can't do in ancestral versions of QStation. One of the real, real important ones is transitions for positions. So, and that was driven by some of the kind of creative projects that I'm working on and wanting to just basically use Space Map Go for spatial orchestration where in one scene, I just lay out the positions for the instruments for the tracks and then create another alternative position where I set the, the positions differently. But rather than, you know, like in the old days, having to create all these trajectories for each channel, it would take quite a bit of time. You can just set a transition time, which can be per channel or can be for the group of channels. And then when you recall that snapshot, the positions all move in time to be able to see that in the overview. It opens up the doors to really fast spatial orchestration that's musical. It's a, it's a very musical application. You know, let's take our monitor guy, for example. Let's say we're dealing with a choreographed dancer and we know that that dancer will start up up here. All I would do is simply make sure that I put that choreographed dancer in this section and let's say we know that the next move is that uh, that person's down here on the corner. I would save another channel snapshot and we'll look at our overview window here. And when we save those channel snapshots, I already saved them. You can add wait times and transition times. And now if I just recall my position one, we have a three second wait. So it says hold up for three seconds. 
and we have a six second transition time. And now the position is naturally moving back to wherever it was assigned. And so, yeah, being able to live mix and adjust these transition times in real time compared to what we used to have to do is really cool. And it's very easy. Again, uh, while Steve was talking, I programmed two snapshots and had two moves programmed for this one dancer moving across the stage so that she could hear her monitors. That's the fun part. Well, uh, while people are quiet, I'm going to just uh, share my screen. Oh, Martine, one of the questions that you sent me after the last roundtable that I didn't get to um, was, can I use a, I think it was a Motu AVB switch to just play around with? We are, as a company, we're a Avenue member. And as part of that membership, um, we, as other companies are, have agreed to support the organization to certify products. And that certification helps ensure that, for instance, the Avid's Milan certified card for their console that they've announced will work with our Milan certified Galaxy. In fact, any day now, 1.0.1 Space Map Go will be released and a new version of Galaxy firmware, and that will support that. So that's, a, that's the avenue certification. Now, there are companies that have done created av uh, products that use AVB without going through certification. I'll give you two examples. One of them is Motu. One of them is Apple. So Apple is not certified. They're not part of Milan. So it's not part of our officially supported group because they're not part of the club. They haven't joined. They haven't uh, been part of that certification. However, there are some of us who, who have used products like these. Um, and like in my testing, I use a Mac and I use AVB out of the Mac. There are some gutches there. You have to manually go and click on the synchronization every time you use it. So it's not a, something we put out there as, hey, it's just plug and play, it'll always work. You have to know a couple of workarounds to make it work. It's, it's a tricky thing. So we have the, the Milan Avenue certified, that's what we support. But there's also other AVB products that very well may work for you. In fact, Mark Gray, um, who will be joining us later today, is using a Mac for his playback, and it's been rock solid for him. Yeah. But he knows about, for instance, this synchronization clocking workaround you have to do. So we're not pushing this or su actively supporting it because it's not part of the certified Sweet. It's a yeah. little tricky, but that's just the, the world we live in. Yeah. Uh, but if you do need an Avenue certified switch, uh, the Avenue Alliance has a list of certified devices. Uh, the ones that we like working with are um, currently Extreme switches, uh, the X440. There are certain models you have to use. And then the Luminex Gigacore series of switches. Um, and those are very audio guy, non IT person friendly. I love working with them. You can get a Gigacore 10 which is a half rack and you can actually have full redundancy with two in a full rack space with the luminex gig core 10. Um, so what i just was showing you now is this transition so basically i'm sitting in a snapshot where i'm doing some movement on a stereo pair now if i select this uh mid rear this this changes to a static position and it is slowly moving it to that mid rear position so if i if I start from here and I go to this uh, mid rear, you'll see that it's transitioning. So that is really easy to do in Space Map Go. And so I'm also working on some other work with uh, musician producer Eric Hall. And here's a case where I have multiple channels of, if we look in this overview, so these are all the various channels of the tracks I'm working with are basically roads, guitars, basses, guitars. I'm playing it back through Logic, uh, multi-channel through AVB into my Galaxy for testing. And uh, now if I, if I go all to the front channel, then I can basically in one gesture move all these channels to different positions. And it makes it super fast to experiment with the spatial orchestration. So I think the, what I just showed you is very fast to do. So if I'm in the mix view and I just change some of these positions here and just make this new mix, then 
I'm just changing these positions. Now, if I go to the set list and add a test um, and say I want a transition time of uh, six seconds and say, just select all these channels or some of them, maybe just not all of them. Yeah, and so now I've created the snapshot. So if I start with the front center, there we are. And now if I go to this test, this is the one I just created. And pretty soon the overview, uh, uh, you know, at some point we can ease will be touchable, which was, uh, uh, will allow you to mi mix even faster. Um, and so that's yeah, going to be really, yeah. really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, Stay tuned. As Steve said, there is a release coming very shortly that's going to have some more improvements and uh, fixes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So for QLab, do you recommend an AVB interface versus the internal network interface? For QLab, right now, if for show critical environments, I would recommend Analog or AES. There's also Avid Milan, a 192 card that just got announced. There's some other Milan devices that say they can do Milan. Uh, we just can't guarantee that they're available because they're not certified. But if there is a Milan certified device that you do have on your network, let's say um, from another company that's certified, you could use a Galaxy and send that, but work bi-directionally. You can take that device and work it in. The other thing I'll point out is that we did create a form for Space Map Go, and part of our intention is for users to share their exper experiences. So if you've used product X with Space Map Go and you say it works and here's how I did it, put it on the forum so other people can learn about how you did it. That's why we did that. So maybe, yeah, Josh, you can show that. So if you go um, to the MeyerSound.com website, our sound products, um, and then click forum uh, under the Meyer Sound product page for Space Map Go. There is a community for both Map 3D and Space Map Go. So if you have questions like that, or you're figured out a way to use a device that might work, feel free to put that in this community. Uh, this is an open forum for everyone. Questions about OSC are the channel captures cues recallable remotely by Dimitri or other OSC? Yes, yes. Uh, all channels get captured and you have an external recall ID. For more information on that, look at the help web website. And you can also download a QLab file that has OSC examples on the help website. Every snapshot, whether it's a system snapshot, channel snapshot, or mix snapshot is recallable via OSC. And that's on roundtable two, I think is when we, we talk, we do an example of how to program OSC for external control. Right, and so so there um, you see the, for this one, I just created the recall ID is 1016. And one thing we've done with Space Map Go is that all the user content starts at ID 1000. And yeah. the uh, snapshot, you know, between zero and 999 are reserved um, for our use in the, essentially the default project. Yeah, here's our set list. I made some few, uh, snapshots earlier. Uh, so here's the external recall ID for this first mix snapshot that I made. And then here are, if I, you just click this, uh, here's the external recall ID for this channel snapshot. And simply all you would do is use an OSC command, slash recall, slash mix, or slash recall, slash channel, depending on what type of snapshot you want to recall. And then, um, add your external recall ID. Oh yeah, cues are snapshots in Space Map Go. Talk a bit about the translation from Cue Station world to Space Map Go world. One thing we've done is that we've, <clears throat> another improvement I believe is that Space Map Go gives you a framework. It has that built in so you don't have to worry about how to organize your control, your control points. So system snapshots are, they are cues under the hood um, that control the control points needed for your EQs, your delays, as part of your system calibration. And then the yeah. mixed snapshots are groups of channels that have all of the parameters that you see, you know, in the mix view. 
So those, yeah. in addition to this, this mixed level. And then the, the channel snapshots are scoped to one or more chosen channels. So yes, under the hood, those are cues, but the whole beauty of what we've done here with snapshots is to create a framework so you don't, you don't have to learn about the intricacies of capturing. It just does it. Yeah. It, just try it's to make it more, to make your life easy. Yeah, exactly. So we're welcoming Jose to this, uh, who's a part of the SpaceMap Go development team and tech support. So the um, question was about reverb because there's no reverbs in SpaceMap Go so far. Uh, so the channel on the left is the actual signal. So it's moving around the circle. And if you look at the right, SpaceMap is doing the opposite. So every time it closes to a, to a, a speaker node, it's actually populating the other nodes. So there's two ways of approaching this. Channel two could be reverb fed from the channel one, or each of these could be feeding a reverberator that is then summed into the output uh, of the output that goes to the loudspeaker. And so then yeah. you'd have less level where your direct sound is and you have more reverberation on the other side where it is. And so what it is, is doing now is when you're on the opposite side, uh, you have zero dB of attenuation and then each side three dB and each side six dB and it goes down to minus 12. And so that's yeah. two options. You can have reverberator per side of per speaker or, and then you fit it through an aux send, which is a derived node and then you summon in the other place or you just uh, use a single mono feed, a reverb feed and then you fit it back into this one. Yeah, recently uh, I, we prepped a room in Nashville for a demo, uh, for a demo as a demo space. Um, if you are in the Nashville area, let us know. Send an email to your local sales manager uh, to try and get some uh, some time scheduled in the room if you want. That room is actually very dead. It was designed to be sort of a very studio space, and uh, unfortunately. I, you know, it was so dry that the tracks that we had for content were super dry and they were very dead recordings. So what I did was actually just open up, you know, Pro Tools and I added my favorite convolution reverberator called Altiverb and I bounced out wet stems of the tracks. And then I added them on SpaceMap Go channels and built space maps that allowed for multiple control of reverb across the room. That was playback content, but the same rules can apply in someone like Denny's world where all Denny would have to do is just add a reverb to an aux and send that aux to a galaxy. And then he could use space map to send it everywhere. Have you done that yet, Denny? Yeah, that's actually, you know, it was interesting. Jose, that's, that's really cool, by the way, because uh, I've been doing that in a different way where but that's really cool how you can link the channels and make them follow each other and behave in that way based upon the way you place your derived nodes and your virtual nodes. That's really cool. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely been, I think one of the, we talked in 2019, we did the ISE show, we did a little demonstration using one of the earliest versions of SpaceMap Go. And one of the things that I talked about was the psychoacoustic effect of seeing someone on stage hit a drum. Well, if that's a physical thing, I saw it happen, I wanna hear it come from over there come from the stage if it came out of a little speaker behind my head that would be a little bit of a disconnect particularly if it was a voice of my favorite singer so one of the things when you start to get into live is you you want to start to have fun and play with things that you can't see so if you've got things in your tracks you know fun little percussive things or synths or maybe there's a synth bed or maybe background vocals if you've got like a choir singing on a track or something like that those are the things you start to play with and reverb definitely falls into that category as something that you can start to play with and have fun. I've definitely, um, it occurs to me that in a house of worship, it could be interesting to have an additive map with some reverb on it and only put that in the surround. So you think as you know, as your, your preacher is, you know, he's, he's talking to the congregation, he gets more excited, the reverb gets huge and then he gets quiet and starts to whisper all of a sudden and the reverb just disappears and it becomes dry and you can really localize on them. So there are definitely some cool ways to utilize reverb. FaceMap Go is input agnostic. Whatever you send to us, you can move however you want. It's adding abstraction to a loudspeaker layout, but also we don't care what you send. Uh, you know, it could be a DJ left and right. It could be a single preacher or pastor's microphone 
or it could be your favorite reverb plugin from your console or your Pro Tools session. So I love personally from a theatrical background, love bouncing out wet, 100% wet stems. And then I use, I, I goose them in and sneak them into all my side surrounds when I need to for theatrical moments. And so it allows for a lot of control very easily. And you're not limited to the reverb that we think sounds good. You're limited to the reverb that you think is sound, sounds good. And that allows for a lot of really cool functionality. This was an artistic discussion and sort of a, a meld between the science to sound guy to artists. And really with SpaceMap, we have now a creative tool that allows you to do so much. Like Denny said, every single person that we've shown this to has come up with a new and interesting idea. Um, in the pandemic world right now, people are doing a lot of these live virtual shows. And we actually have systems out that people are putting black tracks trackers on a talker. And as that talker is moving towards the screen to interact with a certain section of the audience in this 360 degree screen environment, we actually use the black tracks beacon to focus the audio just on those speaker, uh, all those loudspeaker locations. Danny, is there anything you want to plug right now? What podcast are you about to go on? So yeah, uh, just here this afternoon, uh, me and some friends of mine, we're going to record the Signal to Noise podcast from Pro Sound Web. So definitely check that out. We might get on some spatial mixing topics there. That'll be interesting. I don't know when that will release, but definitely we'll, uh, we'll let Josh know and uh, anyone that's interested. Yep. And then uh, what's your company name and website? Uh, so yeah, Miller Audio Industries, you can check it out at millerai.com. There's a cool shop there. We've got some interesting products for measuring in-ear monitors, uh, also a uh, representative for ISMCon microphones. So if you need any kind of measurement microphones, you can get those from me. Uh, and you can also check out my Instagram page at underscore Miller AI, where you can find all some of the interesting projects that we did less this year, a lot more last year and what's to come in the future. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, awesome. You guys have a good day. And uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks.